All right, we're going to be taking you through the conservation of angular momentum lab. Uh, to start off, the title, Angular Momentum Lab, and this will consist of two separate tasks. The first task is to determine the change in omega for the bottom disc as the top disc falls on top of it. So it's going to be spinning, and then it's going to have something land on it, and it's going to change its uh, angular velocity. Um, after you do that, the computer is going to spit out a graph to you, and I don't need you to print the graph, but you're going to sketch it in your notes, and so you can refer back to this picture, but we do just want a, a simple sketch of the values that you got off of the graph, and again, you'll see that in a little bit of how we got them off of Logger Pro. The task two is to calculate the angular acceleration then. And um, this can be done through a couple different methods and using our formulas or using um, slope calculations off the computer. Uh, but again, just hit pause and, and jot these down to get us started uh, getting into the lab collection. To get it set up so the computer knows, you've got to open up Logger Pro and then just go ahead and plug in the USB port into the side of your computer. And what that'll do, a little green icon will show up, and that's the interface icon. Click that, and then you're going to set up that Digital Sonic 1 sensor as a rotary motion sensor. From there, uh, it loads the theta time and the omega time graph, and you're just going to hit play to collect your data and um, do your launch. So we're going to spin the thing around, just get it spinning as the data is collecting, and we're going to drop this disk from a small distance above so it lands and then slows the wheel down. And you can see that change, that dip, right when they hit. There's a difference in velocity values. Um, mine are negative because it was spinning clockwise, uh, but feel free to spin it counterclockwise if you want the values to come out to be positive. So you can see on that lower omega time graph, we had a certain velocity, and then it dropped right at the hit. And you're going to be analyzing uh, down on that graph those values of omegas before and after the hit. So we can use that examine button that we've tried out before and you can just move that cursor before and after the hit and jot down the values of the time and the omega. Uh, another method for this is you could just find the slope of that little change and that slope um, can get you your change in omega over time as well. We did a, a shared conclusion for this lab, um, and we're going to have everyone kind of write down the same thing. And it really just says, a closed system will always conserve angular momentum. If our system was just one disk, then there would be a change in momentum because it would experience an external torque. And we get a general formula that L equals I omega. So we'd like you to have this jotted down, and really the main idea here is that um, if our system is large enough to include both disks, then all the torques and forces that happen from the collision are internal, and so the momentum is conserved. That's the law of conservation at work. But if, um, if we say our system is just a one disk alone, then um, that net external torque would come from outside the system, and it would change that momentum.